floor of the GCIC uh, building. As you heard uh, there, they're ready to accept all kinds of complaints. Um, and uh, we'll get more info. Maybe we'll get Jess on again in a couple weeks just to play a little bit of uh, catch up. 834 right now on this Tuesday, March 8th. Let's switch gears just a little bit and um, throw it over to someone who's just been doing an amazing job covering regional uh, news for the stations at KUAM. And we join him again with the very latest, Tomas Maglonia of the KUAM News Team. Good morning, Tomas. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're so grateful to have the pleasure to be joined uh, by uh, Senator Vinny Sablon, who is also uh, running as the Republican candidate uh, alongside Governor Torres uh, for Lieutenant Governor. Uh, Senator Sablon, thanks for joining us. How are you doing this morning? I think you're on mute. Senator Sablon, can you hear us? I think uh, you, you're you're on mute. You uh, you have to unmute yourself. Okay, right there. There okay. you go. Yeah. How are you doing this morning? Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Thomas. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Guam. Good morning, All right. CMI. All right. Just wanted to start with uh, maybe getting uh, some of the uh, major uh, issues and headlines. Uh, getting your comment on them. First of all, you were there on the Senate floor when the near uh, brawl happened between Senator Hawkeug and <clears throat> Senator Manglonia. Obviously, we've reported since then uh, that the rules uh, were adopted and will be uh, in effect. Uh, can we just get your comment on what transpired on the floor and maybe what transpired <clears throat> even after leading to uh, <clears throat> the eventual session that did adopt the rules for impeachment? <clears throat> Thank you for that question, uh, Thomas. Um, yeah, I was ready, you know, um, I know the Senate president came out with an official uh, message to the people. Um, it was very unfortunate. Um, you know, during our sessions, we do have rules of decorum. And um, unfortunately, um, those rules were um, were not followed um, by some of the members. Um, I know that they were passionate about um, the comments that they gave um, on the issue, on the rules. And um, uh, just one thing led to another, um, the elevation of, uh, you know, the, the tone of voices and stuff. So um, it was, it was very, <clears throat> it was very um, unfortunate that <clears throat> that had to happen. But, um, you know, um, hopefully we can uh, move forward with this process in a more um, smooth and calm manner. Um, after, you know, we just kind of um, decided, the Senate president decided that we um, would adjourn that session and, um, you know, have everyone cool down and, and, and we'll um, get back to it, which we did um, last Thursday. So, again, we're hoping for um, a smooth process as we as we move forward. And I'm sure that the, uh, the members can um, respect the rules and respect the rules of decorum in the session. And I'm sure that we can get, you know, we can all get, we get through this. And uh, mm -hmm. Senator, uh, I have to ask, uh, you are a sitting senator. You will be uh, one of the votes that determines the future of the governor. Uh, obviously, you're in a unique position that uh, I don't know if you thought you'd find yourself in this position, but uh, you're going to be casting a vote for uh, the future of your running mate. Uh, we've got to ask Governor Torres uh, about uh, his opinion on the Senate. And if he's talk talked to senators, he <coughs> said he hasn't. And he said that he expects a fair trial. For those who uh, are maybe wondering if uh, you should recuse yourself from, from the trial uh, or moving forward, uh, if you aren't, uh, what is your message to the community about how you are approaching the Senate impeachment trial? Um, you know, the, 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 the process going through, it, 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 it went through the House um, and, and they were, um, they had that mandate um, um, to go through the, the impeachment process on, uh, in their House. It's now um, upon the Senate, and um, the Senate did um, create and adopt rules of procedures um, for the impeachment. It's, um, um, you know, a very unique situation um, for myself. Um, I know that people see that and, and, and feel that as well. Um, but, you know, if um, when the records of the articles of impeachment are, are, are sent to the Senate, um, you know, these are the articles that will be used to to consider to consider the decision of of, of the senators, and um, at that point, um, that's when we'll come up um, with with our decision um, on that. So, um, I see a fair uh, fair trial in in, in the Senate. Um, uh, the rules were were you know the the, the senators, the Joint Committee, um, really took a lot of time in 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 creating those rules. So. 
um, you know, uh, of course, we have to respect that process. And it's going through right now. I really don't want to get into uh, more detail. Um, the proceedings will be um, will be transparent. They will be announced. Um, uh, the public will be welcome to um, uh, to join in, um, in 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 commenting and 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 actually seeing how that process um, goes through. So. Um, the articles will be sent um, to the Senate um, within 14 days, and it is that information that will be used um, uh, to come up with that decision. And Senator, is it safe to say that your vote uh, will be sealed in terms of uh, not voting for the conviction of uh, Governor Torres, uh, given that if it, he is uh, voted in the affirmative that he won't be able to hold office? So. Uh, what's your approach personally, and what are some of the uh, you know thought processes that you're going through? Well, like I said, it's a very unique um, situation for my, myself. Um, um, and you know, as, as as senators, we have that mandate um, in, in in this impeachment process to really look at um, the articles and really um, uh, you know kind of consider where. Um, um, uh, the findings, you know, came from and, and, and all that. So, like I said, um, the process is ongoing now. I, I really don't want to dive into, um, you know, a lot of the details and what's going to happen. Um, I'd like to respect that process. Um, and, you know, eventually we'll, we'll, we'll get through this. And um, like I said, the, the impeachment process for the Senate will, you know, will be, will be transparent and, um, you know, it, it will be announced. And um, when that time comes, I'm sure that the, the Senate will come up with a, a fair decision. All right. I wanted to shift gears uh, to your run as lieutenant governor. Why did you make the decision to run with Governor Ralph Torres? Uh, again, in, and in context, as his lieutenant governor is waging his own campaign against him. Uh, what, uh, what, where do you find yourself and uh, what motivated you to commit to the torres Sablon ticket? Well, thanks for a great question, Thomas. Um, you, you know, I've been I've been in public office for I'm going on eight years now. Um, I did start my my tenure in the House um, for two terms. Um, moved up to um, serve the um, at large population of the Sa of Saipan and Northern Islands as their senator. Um, you know, it was a, a real. I had to really, um, you know, a lot of soul searching, dig, dig down deep in my heart and see. Um, what I wanted to do and, you know, how I wanted to continue my public service, you know, to our people of the CNMI. Um, and um, it was then, um, you know, it took uh, several months, um, but it was then that um, it was my desire um, after speaking with supporters and family um, that, you know, I would um, take that step to make uh, decisions on a greater stage and a greater scale. Um, and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, I was that uh, younger kid where, um, you know, our, our, our past leaders said, you know, we, let's, let's mold our kids and our children to be our future leaders. And, um, you know, I'm hoping that one day I could, you know, I could do my part um, right now and, and, and pave that way for, um, for future younger leaders as, um, you know, as my time in public service comes um, uh, to an end in the future and we start a new generation of leadership um, in the future. So, um, you know, it's in general, Thomas. It's 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 really just kind of um, you know um, finding that passion and and really possessing that passion to um, to serve our people and to to do you know to leave our mark and to do our part um, so that when our future leaders come, you know, in in, in the years to come, uh, that we place um, you know we place policies and and and. Um, you know, we paved that way for them to, you know, to continue to protect the identity of our people and continue to to provide the service to our people. So, um, you know, that was the uh, that was the decision. You know, that was the reason for the decision um, uh, to to seek, um, you know, public service um, on a greater scale, on a greater stage um, as the lieutenant governor of the Republican Party and um, the CNMI as a whole. Can you speak to a little bit of your dynamic with Governor Ralph Torres uh, uh, before you committed uh, and now what is the type of relationship uh, you're hoping to forge ahead as a team? Um, you know, as, as uh, you may know, and um, um, our, our, our CMI voters, I, I, I've always ran independent in the past. Um, and 
Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm one to, to not um, really have barriers between between our elected officials or, or, or burn down bridges. I always um, try to carry myself with respect and 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 you know um, uh, have good good um, relationships with our leaders. And I think that's the only way we can um, you know we can come together and really look at the issues, really look at what's going on um, uh, um, around our islands, and 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 identify solutions for that. Um, and if if we can. If we can walk the halls of Congress and, um, you know, um, uh, be in public service in unity, um, regardless of what party we come from, uh, just for the common people, um, I think we can we can identify solutions. Um, I've always had a, a good working relationship with uh, with the governor and um, everybody else in, in all the other uh, parties when I was an independent um, uh, representative of the House and senator. Um, so you know, moving forward, um, it's 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 going to be, um, you know, we're going to have a lot of challenges. We're going to have a lot of successes, um, uh, regardless of the outcome. But you know, I think and I stand by by the the side of my leadership is is to just continue to work together and respect each other. And if we do that, then you know, we don't we don't veer off um, uh, in, in in finding solutions. And, and continuing to provide service to our people. So um, I'm looking forward for a, a healthy relationship with not only the governor, and I do have that healthy relationship with, with him now um, as a sitting senator and, and as, as uh, um, he is the governor. But I also have um, you know good working relationships with everyone else here in the legislature and everyone else in the executive branch. And I think that's what I'd like to bring um, if we get the blessing by our people. I'd like to bring that, that type of leadership to um, um, to really stir um, uh, our CNMI into the right direction so that we can place um, good policies and we can place um, good programs um, and systems for our, our future leaders um, of the Commonwealth. Senator, uh, there are three teams in the mix uh, for November. Uh, of course, as you know, uh, we've had uh, Democrats, uh, Tina, Representative Tina Sablon and Leila Staffler, uh, Democrats running on a slogan, uh, 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 saying good governance continues. Uh, we've got the uh, independents and some of the Republican bloc that has broken off uh, supporting uh, Lieutenant Governor Arnold mm -hmm. Palacios and uh, Sapin Mayor David Apatang. Uh, they're saying they're going to rebuild trust. Uh, what type of campaign are you going to uh, carry on until mm -hmm. November? What is uh, your hope and strategy, given that it is a relatively crowded field at the moment? Um, good question, Thomas. Um, yeah, it is an interesting uh, um, slate of candidates. We have a three-way um, tandem um, um, in this upcoming election. Um, you know, the governor and I are running um, under the, the motto of resilience and vision. <clears throat> um, we have seen the CNMI go through um, so much challenges in the past, um, you know, five to eight years with um, uh, really devastating um, uh, storms that have come our way, um, you know, and then now we're facing this pandemic. Um, the people of the CNMI, and of course, um, under the leadership of the governor and everyone else in the in, in the government and in the legislature, you know, we've we've been resilient. But you know, um, uh, the governor has 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 been able to, to weather those storms and continue to um, ensure that that services are provided in the midst of this pandemic and, and and that's where the resilience comes from you know um, from our people and, and from the leadership of this government and you know and then we want to move into a vision a vision where um, we can be self-sustaining a vision where we can make decisions that will um, provide um, better services for our people you know a vision where um, we can again um, really mold um, uh, a healthy society um, in all aspects aspects of um, our societal issues um, uh, for, for our future um, residents and future leaders of our CNMI. So um, that's what we're running under. That's what we want to offer our people. I know we have a lot of um, uh, issues that we have to um, uh, tackle right now and in the future. You know, we have our economy, um, not to mention what this pandemic has brought, you know, I'm trying to get our tourism back. 
um, a lot of infrastructure um, improvements, um, you know, looking at healthcare, education, um, our workforce also on, 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 on how we're going to um, sustain our, our government and our private sector with the needed workforce. Um, you know, we're also um, looking at our federal mandates as a um, political family of the United States. And just a whole bunch of uh, um, uh, issues and topics, uh, Thomas, that we really have to look at, um, not only as leaders, but as a people. So um, that's what we're, 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 we're running on, you know, we're running on, on you know, we can, we can make those hard decisions when those time come. Um, and, you know, um, sometimes when we, we face these natural disasters or these, these um, issues or challenges that are beyond our control, you know, um, we need the leaders that can come up and make those decisions to um, ensure that our, our communities are safe. And then, you know, we also need um, the leaders that will look forward and be prepared to make those decisions um, when we have challenges that come in the future. All right, Senator Sablan, uh, that's all I had to uh, ask you. Did you want to add anything in closing uh, as uh, both uh, there's just so much going on, the pandemic, the impeachment trial, your campaign? Uh, how, uh, what, what's your uh, message to folks who are watching closely uh, on how all of this melts together in November? Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Um, you, you know, the message is, and I, I, I always, um, um, you know, each time I, 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 I think about what's going on right now and um, what we have to do to um, better the quality of lives of our people, you know, I always tell myself um, uh, just to carry myself, um, you know, with respect and, and to most of all to focus, focus on what we have to do to better the quality of lives of our people and to provide the service they need. Um, so that their quality of life is, is you know, um, is, is, is comfortable. Um, but, you know, um, we're heading into and we are in campaign season, you know, uh, um, you know, a lot of things are sensitive and, you know, people are, are, are you know, really rooting for their own candidates. But, you know, um, my message is, um, you know, we want to continue to do good. We want to continue to, like I said, to pave the way for um, for our kids when it's their turn to lead. So. Um, you know, if we all um, stay resilient and be resilient, you know, I'm sure we can look um, into a better vision for, for us and I in the future to come. All right. Thank you, Senator Vinny Sablan. And we uh, surely hope this isn't the last time we get to speak with you. Uh, things are just getting started. So hope to be in touch and uh, have you on the program and uh, looking forward to seeing you in the CNMI when I get a chance as well. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Thomas. And yes, uh, we'll be looking forward to more interviews and uh um, you know, more addresses to our people. So um, uh, good morning to the uh, people of Guam. Good morning to the beautiful people of the CNMI. Um, have a great week and uh, God bless. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, Chris, there you have it. Uh, uh, our uh, first interview on the program with Senator Sablan. And uh, 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 we've interviewed uh, every uh, candidate for governor and lieutenant governor for the CNMI at this point uh, yep. early on in the race. And a race that is uh, already heating up, as uh, as he said. So, uh, yeah, that's hot par. <laughs> Gonna be good. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, check us out tomorrow. We're getting. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this guy, the governor of the CNMI. <laughs> governor Rob. Governor Torres. Rob Torres coming yeah. on uh, the show to talk about uh, just a bunch of stuff. So uh, it's eight fifty three. Tomas, great job. As Thanks. always, uh, covering regional news. There's a bunch of other stuff you do, uh, though, too. Could could you speak to the From the Files podcast, a uh, new episode, uh, if you will? Yes, exciting things ahead. Uh, as you know, From the Files takes a look back through uh, the several decades of KOAM's historic reporting. And this week's episode is called Newsmakers. Oh. And... Uh, we have uh, footage that hasn't been seen in a while from President Bill Clinton's uh, visit. Some uh, familiar faces. Uh, it wasn't that too long ago, depending on when you were born. Uh, it was the year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it, uh, we, we really bring you back and walk you through what that time meant. And we're going to take a look at uh, more and more people and these newsmakers um, and uh, show you uh, the impact they had and the... And the way the island prepared, reacted, processed it after. So 
uh, really exciting things. You know, we, we play the anthem every morning, and that's from that visit, right? That, uh, from the Clinton visit. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but there's a lot of more features that we did as well on everyone who put that together to right. reach that moment. And you're going to get a glimpse of that. And it's such, so it's just such great, uh, again, yeah. just the great storytelling. That I mean, bro, the, the comments on the anthems that we play, I mean, we play it every morning and I never stop getting comments about it. Uh, in fact, a friend of mine, Herg, uh, I don't know if you guys remember Herg, the sound guy, he used to be a sound guy uh, for Ambrose uh, way back in the day, but he was just telling me that he had some footage from that visit and some audio of uh, one of the Chamorro singers that performed uh, that day, so. Yeah, it's crazy, uh, Tomas, when you talk about archives and how this footage and these stories are so old, but they still resonate up to this very day. Yeah, you're going to want to watch it and uh, hit that replay button after because great, great uh, interviews, music. Uh, I almost want to slip in also the commercials. I mean, half of the job yeah, is just yeah, sifting yeah, through yeah, all yeah, the commercials, yeah, finding yeah, the finding right, the yeah. packages. But uh, yeah. just uh, great stuff. And, it, uh, if, uh, you know, it's, it's good to listen to it. But if you want to watch it as well... Uh, you're, you're going to want to watch it as well. Right on. So. Well, uh, Tomas, also I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, the personal journey that you're on that we're going to be uh, covering <laughs> for uh, KUAM. I'm not, it's not just my personal journey. It's for, it's for, it's for the new show, so I don't know. Uh, maybe we can talk more about that okay. when it comes Okay, so up, basically but, uh, we're, back at, we're back in the gym. The whole uh, team gym. is back in the gym. And, like, the whole team. The whole team, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so, Tomas, uh, you, you've been looking. I see some changes, bro. Oh, thanks. thanks. Looking real good. All right, thanks. Yeah, real good. All right borderline you gotta watch it when <laughs> hr is just down the right hallway. on 856 uh guys are brought to you by cowboy enterprises itini and jack in the box thanks so much for jamming with us uh this morning i mean the crime we kind of just went with the crime